Hello and welcome to this video. I was in this location yesterday with a group of people who walk every Saturday and in Kilkenny and they do a bit of history around the walks as well. And this is going to be the last walk I can go on because I have to walk every Saturday now for the season. But anyway, it was totally worth coming here because we heard a talk about this stone there in the back, which looks just like a standing stone or something like that, but it turns out to be the remains of a high cross. And I will show you all the pieces that I could find yesterday and I will map it then of course. But I'll also show you some of the sources that I found yesterday about it. Because when we arrived here we didn't know that it was a high cross, we just thought it was like a standing stone or something like that. So I'll take you over there then. When we arrived the grass was really high and we could barely see the stone. Or we trampled it all down and I'll just walk around. And you can see that it's not just like an ohm stone, what it is actually it worked. And there is a cross here. And then on the other side there's supposed to be a checkered pattern, which I didn't see yesterday. But you see how it's the stone mason has marked it. Oh yeah, actually. I hope it comes out in the video that there is a checker pattern on it. And then the grass was still very high and they were talking over there and I just kicked around with my shoes and then I came across this stone and it looks pretty much like part of the high cross. can see that there hopefully and there's another piece here which could belong to it who knows and a smaller piece there and it's in Canon Carrigan and I'll show you a screenshot of what he wrote about it and I'll read it out as well uh, he just he just knew about the the pillar stone I think he calls it, and then the members of the Kilkenny Archaeological Society discovered the other parts in the nineteen sixties, Margaret Phelan and I forget the other I think McAvoy is the other name, and um, there's a, a photograph in the Old Kilkenny Review nineteen sixty four in the article by Ellen Prendergast, who was an archaeologist in Kilkenny and I think in Dublin. And the photograph was taken by Leo McAdams, who used to work in the Monster House, I believe. And there's a lovely drawing of the cross and the, the head of the cross as well. So yeah, that was the exciting discovery I made yesterday. Well, that's, that's pretty cool, I think. And I'll show you the the sources that describe the cross and then we're going to go and map this field. The field is called the church field because they believe there was a church here at some point and they also believe that this cross marked the grave of a bishop in the early Christian era. What I noticed yesterday was the lack of hawthorn trees. I don't see any around this area and you would expect them in an old graveyard which is probably what this used to be because it's circular and there is a bit of um, a bit of a ditch around it. It's hard to see, but that's what Kerrigan describes. So there we have lime trees there, two lime trees, a maple tree, and then over there chestnut trees and more maple trees. So it's not really any indication of an early Christian graveyard or anything like that. I don't know about those dead trees, it's difficult to say what they are. So Canon Carrigan in his The History and Antiquities of Osri, volume 3, page 266 and 67, says Legate's Wrath, and he spells it different than we do nowadays, but that's just, you know, anglicization of place names. 
The Church of Legatrath stood in Legatrath East in a field called the Church Field. All traces of it have been obliterated, but the circular earthen rampart about 30 yards in diameter that enclosed it is still distinctly traceable. In the very center of the enclosing ring is an ancient pillar stone of granite, standing to a height of 3.5 feet over the ground and about 17 inches wide and 12 inches thick. It is rough below, but chiseled smooth above, where a plain sunk cross has been carved on the south face and a very peculiar cross of the Czech pattern on the north face. These crosses are evidently the work of very remote times and date probably from the first ages of the faith in this country. The pillar stone is said to mark the grave of a bishop who suffered death at the hands of his persecutors and whose remains were laid to rest here. The next field to the south of the church field is called the Killeen, or Little Church, from its proximity to the site of the old church. And you see that there's also a photograph there of, I guess, him or someone in the field with the stone and you can distinctly see the cross on it. You saw it in the video, it's not really that visible anymore. And I don't know how you would see a cross in the Czech key pattern. See, so spells it. It just looks like a checkered pattern to me. Well, I'm not an expert on crosses, so who am I to judge? I have put the article by Ellen Prendergast on the CAS website, on the Kilkenny Archaeological Society website, and if you want to read it, you can find it there. She talks about the type of stone and she compares it to other high crosses of the Osri group and uh, mentions Helen Rowe, who wrote this um, booklet about Osri high crosses. And it's an interesting read anyway. So if you want to do that, you'll find it in the description of the video. And now to map the site, I'm on the OpenStreetMap website, openstreetmap.org, and I'm logged in. And this is where the field is. There's Killeen Hill. There's a vaccination center at the moment. And um, to get there, you take the lane just before the roundabout. And there is a gauge. I thought I had mapped it already somewhere here, I think. And then you can leave your car, your bike or whatever there and go through the gate and walk up here. And there are a lot of um, like power poles and pylons and stuff like that in this field here because it's a training ground for the ESB where they train the, their technicians to climb the power poles, I guess. Anyway, so the church field is behind that then and you see you've already added three of the trees and I'll click edit. And I'll add a few more trees. As I said, these two are lime trees. So we will add species en and lime, common lime, I guess. Um, if you have the Latin name, you can put that in and you just use species, not species en. And I could also add the German name, which would be Linda. Just whatever name you have. If you have the Irish name, it's species, colon, GA. And then there was a maple tree here. So it's natural tree. And then species, ooh, species, EN is maple. And... Well, it's not really important to add the German one, it's just to add more information. And then over here, that was a chestnut tree, species dot en. And if you want to add the Latin ones, then you'll find them on Wikipedia, for example. I think it's a horse chestnut. And... There's another maple tree over here, wasn't there? I can just copy that from here. Okay, so the high cross is here, this dot. Problem is, of course, that there is no tag for high crosses. Um, sometimes people use wayside cross, but I think that's wrong because it's definitely not a wayside cross. There's no way. 
Um, so I'm just gonna make up a tag and maybe add a few more high crosses in the future and establish that tag for it. So I know some people refer to the Miss Celtic cross, but I think that's wrong because it's not part of the Celtic civilization because that's centuries earlier. So we're gonna go with watch archaeologists call it and that's high cross. And then I can add a description. Um, standing pillar stone, oh, pillar stone with cross head on the ground and other parts. Well, I'm gonna rephrase that. And then reference Carrigan three two sixty six two oops two sixty seven and I could also add O'Kelly's I think it's on page ninety one it is yeah I'll just add a semicolon O'Kelly place names page 91 and OKR 1964 page 5 and following you don't have to do that with everything it's just because we talked about it might as well um yeah you can't really see um the the embankment. I'm just gonna go to the British War Office map and see if we can see it there. Yeah, so you see that that's where the the embankment or the circular enclosure or whatever you want to call it, um, it's on the British War Office map. But it's also on the first edition of the Ordnance Survey map. I can show you that. I'll just save here. A slight problem um trees high cross a slight problem I had with this is that the historic environment viewer isn't working at the moment. I checked yesterday on site to see if it was recorded. I'm sure it is, but um you know how you get those red and blue dots on it to show you where the sites are and they're just not showing and the filter isn't working either so I wanted to include that in the video but it's just an empty map with none of the records showing I don't know what's going on there usually you'd have red dots all over the place and some blue dots and then I thought well I could just filter for high cross but you see how it's still loading here and it doesn't stop doing that I don't know so I can't show you but what I can show you is the old maps so I'm gonna zoom in here that's the lane the I've forgotten the number now 26 3 11 I think so the uh, historic six inches the earliest you see it has a circular enclosure with something in the middle, but it doesn't really say what it is. And then the next one would be the historic 25 inch, I guess. And you just have some sort of an embankment. And that's 1913 at the latest. And the Cassini 6 inch, again, just has a circular embankment or something. And the satellite view... Is quite similar to the Esri imagery it might actually be the same and I think that's the latest and then you ha also have this one and that's a bit more blurry and back on the OpenStreetMap website I just wanted to have some time to pass so it would show the changes so we have the the trees now and the high cross isn't showing. Maybe I should have defined it as an archaeological site as well. 
Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Sorry about that. And I'll use side type high cross instead. There's no standard, so like I'm just gonna <laughs> make it up as I go along. Um, but that should show the little amphora. For the historical site. I know we're not supposed to map for the renderer, but it's a bit difficult when there isn't a standard. So there we have the symbol for the um, archaeological site now. At least that'll be an indicator for future visitors. And I hope you found that interesting. I was surprised to find a high cross that I didn't know about because I actually did a talk about high crosses in the Hole in the Wall in Kilkenny about three years ago for Heritage Week, but it was based on Helen Rowe's book and she doesn't mention it, so that's why I didn't know about it. But now I do. And it was a, a pleasant surprise to find it and it just goes to show that there's so much more to discover. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm, I almost have 100 subscribers. That would be really smashing if I could get those. And tell your friends and go and explore your own area, please. And map it. <laughs> and thanks for watching. Bye.